Hello, everyone. Professor Zeeb here. Welcome into our lecture, our short lecture on some theories of adolescence. The one we're going to focus on in this segment is the very famous G. Stanley Hall, uh, you know, one of our founding fathers in terms of uh, theories of adolescent development. All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, so there are, you know, there are a few ther different theories of adolescence, uh, but we're going to focus on a classic in this segment. Once again, the very famous G. Stanley Hall. We're going way back to this one. So we're going over 100 years. So this is a, definitely a, a classic, if you would. Okay, so G. Stanley Hall uh, around the turn of the century here. So G. Stanley Hall, he was one of the first people to construct a psychological theory of teenage development. In fact, he wrote two full volumes just on this subject. So wrote extensively on the theories of teenage development. And this was back in 1904 uh, when he uh, published those volumes. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with all those details because obviously that's a lot of information, but really what I wanna focus on in this short lecture is this whole concept of storm and stress, which is coined, was coined by G. Stanley Hall. So a lot of developmental psychologists describe the teenage years as a term, as a, as a period, excuse me, of storm and stress. In other words, it's stormy and stressful compared to uh, some of our other life stages. So I want you to think for a second, think back to your teenage years, some of you obviously a couple years ago, uh, but for our students here, think back to uh, when you were a teenager and how things were very different during that time compared to say being an adult, okay? So why is adolescence described as being stormy and stressful? I mean, there's, there's many different reasons. Some of them come from uh, the feelings of being moody. So teenagers are classic for having really moody, roller coaster type emotions at times. Uh, it could be the untrust, untrustworthiness of teens that they are classic for. Uh, we also know that teens are classic risk takers. So a lot of our risk taking period uh, comes up during this time, whether it's unprotected sex, uh, reckless driving, experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Uh, it, it turns out that we are more likely to take risks during this time of our life compared to almost any stage uh, that we would talk about in a class like this. I, I mean, I know for sure when I look at myself personally, some of the stuff that I used to do as a teenager, I, I just can't even fathom that I would do that. And I'm embarrassed to even say that. Uh, but I definitely would agree with that in my personal life is that during my teenage years, I did take a lot of risks, okay? So we really think one of the reasons for that is lack of brain development. So the brain is not completely developed during the teenage years, especially part of the brain uh, responsible for decision-making and weighing consequences. More specifically, the prefrontal cortex is not completely developed. And so we think that may be a reason why teens take risks is because they don't think about the consequences in the same way that a mature adult would. Some other reasons for risk taking or other reasons why we would describe them as stormy and stressful. It's the conflict with parents that teens are famous for, you know, the argumentative sort of mentality, uh, trying to defy authority, for example, and not exactly follow their parents' teachings, if you would. So that is classic where uh, teens often uh, fight with their parents and argue and that kind of stuff. We also think that there's a lot of confusion going on, uh, you know, trying to figure out who you're going to be as a person. What college are you going to, going to go to? What are you going to become when you get older? You know, all these decisions, decisions about sexuality, you know, what, what type of person I am in terms of my sexual orientation. Those types of things are often being figured out during this time which is, once again, adding fuel to the fire, uh, creating a stormy and stressful environment. So we really think there's a lot of reasons for that. Well, every theorist has their critics and Hall is no exception. I mean, number one, it's a very old theory, so it's very outdated. Uh, but a lot of the critics going against Hall believe that when he described adolescence, now remember, this was 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, but the way he described adolescence was almost like um, being overly judgmental towards 
uh, teens. Uh, for example, a lot of them describe him as being uh, almost like preacher-esque in terms of uh, judging what teens should be doing and should not be doing, and that really infiltrated his writings, and, and definitely uh, some people believe that's a biased view of teens, especially for a lot of behaviors that we consider to be normal today. Uh, were looked on as 100 years ago as being shocking and, and evil and almost like uh, immoral in that sense. And, and so in fact, uh, G. Stanley Hall seemed to focus on teenage immorality, especially when it comes to sex and things like that, experiments with masturbation, for example. Uh, he really felt that, you know, teens were immoral for that reason. Now remember, over 100 years ago, before sex was, you know, officially studied uh, systematically, the views were very, very different on that. And so it kind of reflects that older flavor, that older feeling uh, of, the, of the mentality of that time where people were not discussing sex out in the open and some of these uh, behaviors where today we, we consider, you know, to be a little bit more open in terms of those concepts. So once again, a lot of, a lot of criticism for the work is just being sort of old fashioned and outdated for that reason, all right? So please continue to our next step in the class. We will discuss uh, another great theory. So stay tuned for that and go on to the next uh, part of the class.